Thank you, Sandy, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I've known Sandy for 15 years, so uh, for her to sort of announce that today, it's a, it's a bit of a, uh, a, a welcome home. So thank you, Sandy. You're the right person to lead the event today. So I'm excited today to talk about, um, I guess, our organisation, Nepean Engineering and Innovation. But from my perspective, be here today and, and talk about the Advanced Manufacturing Research Facility um, as a supporter of this, of, of this facility um, is important to us and our organisation. And also for us, we're, we're a foundation partner of, of the new um, Aerotropolis there as well, which is, um, again, a, a great initiative that we're yeah, on, on the ground level of. So today I will be talking about leadership, workforce development and innovation. But before we get to that point, I just want to sort of give some perspective about, um, my, I guess, my journey in manufacturing. And uh, I'm a, I see myself as being a, a craftsperson. Uh, I actually started at Nepean Engineering and Innovation in 1998. So I've been in the industry 25 years. The photo on the right was a photo taken of me in, in my first year as an apprentice. Um, and since then, I've been able to sort of go on to university and other, other things. But from my perspective, a fundamental part of my journey was, was I guess, not accepting uh, a university placement to become a teacher. And instead, I took up an, an apprenticeship as well. So from my perspective, leading an organisation that I started with um, as a 17-year-old to now lead that organisation today and into the future is very important to me. So from my perspective, the, the fellow on the right-hand side of that photo there, or your left-hand side, he's the founder of Nepean Engineering. So to give some perspective, Nepean Engineering was founded in 1974. We're almost 50 years old, and, and that founder was able to create momentum in the sector when manufacturing wasn't in vogue. And I guess I've, I'm standing on the, on the shoulders of giants in the fact that all the hard work has, has been done and there's a new focus uh, on manufacturing, particularly advanced manufacturing, that a, a lot of the industry can, re can really now take advantage of. And it's a, from my perspective, in terms of telling my own children or people uh, coming into the trade or, or an engineering career, there's no better time to be in manufacturing and engineering. So from my perspective, to be that young person there, um, I love manufacturing and also wanted to point out that I still love manufacturing. So how, I guess, a, a cheeky 17-year-old can go on and then come back to run the company, um, I think it, it tells a great story about, about our particular trade. So enough about me. Um, in terms of our organisation, so today, um, again, we stand on, on the facilities there in, in Western Sydney in, in Norellan. Uh, we're 20 minutes from the new Aerotropolis and we have around 55,000 square metres of workshops there. So we have capabilities for manufacturing, um, structural steel, laser cutting, sheet metal, CNC's and, and soon to be additive and, and 3D technology. So we've got over 30 CNC machines um, and, and I think from my perspective in terms of where we're going, we're at the, there's a real groundswell again around manufacturing and, and we feel that we're part of that. Uh, we have great connections with the university, university sectors, with TAFE, uh, and also bringing young people onto the organisation. And when I came back two and a half years ago, we had one apprentice. And today we stand on a, an organisation which has got 13 apprentices. And, and that partnership with TAFE uh, is really important to us and our organisation and growing our, our organisation in the future. Um, a couple of important stats about our organisation, the fact that we, we've been around for 48 years, we've got over 200 active uh, customers, which we, we, we truly value our customers and, and feel that's part of our growth uh, into, into the future. But 90% of our 300 suppliers are, are in Australia, based in Australia. So from our perspective, have over 130 people on our site. In terms of Nepean, the, the global brand that is Nepean, so it's still privately owned. Nepean Engineering and Innovation, we are the founding member, so we, we always beat our chest and say we're the, the, the founding organisation, but today we we span uh, 14 countries around the globe, um, still privately owned that I, that I mentioned, and we, we turn over around $650 million. So we're not a, not a small business anymore, um, which, which is, again, a great success story for, for Western Sydney. The first topic I'm going to talk about today is around leadership. So from my perspective, leadership rules. And from, from my perspective, being having the privilege of leading an organisation which is progressive, which is investing in people, which is investing in new technology, in machines, uh, again, it re reiterates the, the force that there is no better time to be in manufacturing. Uh, from, from my perspective, in terms of um, the organisation, we have, um, I guess, gone through a transition where we had uh, a long-standing uh, stable workforce, where over 35% of our, of our workforce have been with our organisation for over 10 years, and 25% have been over for 25 years. So 
We have a great uh, groundswell of people who are experienced, who have been in our trade for, in our industry for many years, but there needs to be change. And from my perspective, it was changing those old ways. And, and Peter mentioned before around the way it's always been done is not how it's going to work in the future. And it's changing some of the mindset we have from those older employees to say, well, look, there's another way or a better way of, of doing things. And after, I guess, almost 30 years operation, I was able to create a, a leadership team where we've got BD, we've got production, we've got engineering, all coming to the table to bring their ideas about how they can shape the future because it's not one person sort of saying, how are we going to do this and how are we going to, uh, I guess, attack these problems? It's bringing a, a whole team together that they can then lead there and, and, and empower their teams as well, which is, which is really important. So from my perspective, creating a culture where people want to work, it's important in the fact that you, you want to bring people into the organisation that are attracted to your organisation for particular things. And for us, again, it's that investment in people. Uh, people know that when they came, come to our organisation, they will get trained in, in the cutting edge technology. And in terms of the, I guess, as an endorsement for what um, the Advanced Manufacturing Research Facility are doing in terms of Peter's team and, and the NETM uh, micro-credentialing, we're on the ground stage of that as well, supporting that. And, and we're hoping to host those type of micro-credentialing um, programs on our site, which is, which is important. So there's collaboration. Um, from my perspective, I, I think it's important that all leaders in their organisations need to know, uh, know their workers. And I mean that from an intimate perspective in terms of their interests outside of work, their family connections, what makes them tick. And I guess to quote Simon, Sin Simon Sinek, it's, it's the why. Why do people come to work? Why do they connect with particular organisations? And for me, that's, that's really important. In terms of workforce development, so again, in, uh, to give you a snapshot about our organisation, we, we uh, I guess I use the word loosely, but we burn almost 5,500 hours per week in our workshop. So we need to keep the workload up to that workforce every week to, to keep our, the momentum of our, of our organisation going. So you can see that slide on, the, on your right hand side there. Traditionally, engineering and manufacturing is very lumpy. In the fact, you'll have your wind work, and then the problem becomes not winning work, it then becomes delivering. And it's very much a lumpy sector. And I, I look around with some of our partners in the room today from the industry, we know and understand that. And, and there are long lead times around that. But from our perspective, um, we're fortunate at this point in time that we've got around 60,000 hours that we've, I guess we've won in the last month. And the, the problem then goes from how do we actually win the work to how, how do we actually deliver. So, for us, workforce development is really key. We've invested in, in technology in terms of understanding the, the, the planning and the scheduling around our, around our workforce. If you were to come to me six months ago as a customer, and uh, Pablo Santos, he, he's in the, in the crowd today, he, he's a customer of ours. And if he would have asked me, Peter, where is this particular job at? Six months ago, I would, I would have had no idea. We, we go through every month 550 live jobs. We just did a, a massive upgrade, a project for, uh, for Talus. Um, at the Orchard Hills facility here in, here in Sydney, in Western Sydney, where we manufactured a, a, a missile testing facility on, on their behalf of, of the Prime, where we made these 300 millimetre solid doors where the missiles get brought in, they get tested, hopefully they don't go off, um, and then obviously if they don't, they're then uh, taken out into uh, deployment. So from our perspective, to give visibility to our, to our customers, we invested in a, in a program that could see every live job, the, the status in the workshop, and how that was going to be delivered to the customer in terms of making, making the customer successful. One, one key point in the fact that um, the different generations that we have at our organisation. So traditionally, for the engineering and manufacturing sector, you'll have a, a, a lot of people who are aged between 45, 65, we've even got a 76-year-old person in our workshop. So there's a, a lot of people who have been in the trade for a long time. And then from our perspective, we've got apprentices who are obviously between 16 and call it 24. And then outside of that, there's a gap between the 30-year-olds or call it 25-year-olds through to the 45, 50-year-olds who have just over the last 20 years left the trade. And what I see in terms of the investment happening in advanced manufacturing, again, there'll be people coming back to the trade because it's in vogue. It can be a, a traditional and, and solid career choice for people not only leaving school, as, an, as a degree or degree, degree qualification, but also apprenticeships as well. So it's not going to be a sort of lost generation of people who have left our trade or, or, or left our, our sector. And I think, again, that's really exciting for, for us. 
we have a, uh, I guess I've said before about the 13 apprentices in our organisation. When I was an apprentice, I would have been told, Peter, you're going to be working here for this time, you go and, and you go away and do it. There was no debate, there was no sort of um, collaboration. Um, whereas now I have apprentices who are 19, 20 sitting in front of me saying, Peter, I don't want to work here, I want to learn this focus here, and this is my training plan I've got from TAFE, and I want to go here. Where the tables have really turned, where you've got apprentices and young graduates who are really taking control of their career, and a traditional mindset in manufacturing is you will do this now, immediately or, or, or soon after, whereas now there's a collaborative approach which is coming from the younger generation. It's interesting to see that dynamic change. So my key point there is that workforces are, are changing. Um, and you need to stay up to date with that. In terms of the, the innovation and new markets, so traditionally, um, our organisation, we, we've built, um, call it part of Centrepoint Tower, we've built the Deutsche Bank here in Sydney, 60 Martin Place was a key building of ours where we provide 2,000, 3,000 tonnes of steel uh, for, for a particular project. And then on the other hand, we've, like I mentioned before, we've got 30 CNCs where we're doing precision work, we've been working in the defence sector for over 35 years, in medical and infrastructure. So we're a really diverse organisation, but hanging our hat on a, on a large structural steel project or an infrastructure project maybe isn't always going to be the future for our organisation. So we need to change with that. So new markets is, is where, I guess, we've got innovation in our name. How do we actually make it happen? So from that perspective, we're really looking at, at medical devices and med medical manufacturing as being a key part of our future. We've invested heavily in ISO certification, so we're now certified to actually manufacture parts. I've got a, our, our BD and research uh, manager in the room today, Mark Alou, and he's a, a PhD candidate. You'll never meet a more passionate person about uh, additive manufacturing, medical device manufacturing, and really challenging and, and looking at different ways of how organ organisation can grow to a point where the top right-hand side there, that's a hip replacement. We had that 3D printed, and then we had it transferred to our, to our workshop. It was on the machine in the morning, say 7 o'clock. The hospital arrived at our workshop at, at 11 a.m. And by that afternoon, it was in the patient's hip. So in terms of that, that lead time where we've got traditional sort of three-month, six-month lead times, it's more around the hospital or the doctor or the specialist will say, we've got an opportunity to get your patient in. You need to uh, 3D print this part, machine it on your machines, on our CNC machines, and again, I couldn't believe when, the, when the, the hospital representative turned up that morning to shake our hands at 11 o'clock to say this part will be in a person's body. And we got the text through that, that afternoon to say that the operation went well. So it's just a real different uh, way of, and, and, and an approach of manufacturing. And the fact that I can do 2,000 tonnes over here for a large building, which takes a year and a half, or I can do an implant for someone's body, which is just incredible. If you would have said to that apprentice 25 years ago, this is what your organisation is going to be doing. I, I would have probably turned and become a teacher. <laughs> no offence to teachers. Um, the other thing is that, I, I guess from our perspective, um, Western Parkland, Parkland City Authority, we really see that as being a strategic partnership. And for those organisations who, I guess, are, are sitting here today or, or trying to grasp how to actually partner and connect with, with this massive project and massive, massive opportunity for our industry, I think there's some great people in the room you can connect with and they're, and they're equally as, as interested and passionate about, about our sector um, as, as we are. And again, that training model, um, being only 20 minutes away from the new Aerotropolis, um, I've said to Sarah and a few other people today who dare to listen that in that photo today next to the fireside chat, that, that building on the right-hand side in 2026, I've identified my office up there. So um, I'm not sure who's going to be more upset, Sarah or, or myself, when, when that comes through. So. Um, that's, that's important to note. In terms of um, other markets, obviously at the moment there's a lot of money being spent in defence and we're not a new entrant to that market in the fact that we've been in this industry for 30 years and currently at the moment we manufacture plinths, um, ammunition, um, a lot of ammunition parts for, for tanks. Um, we've done some work for the underwater um, team of Talos over many years um, as well, which is, which is important. But Again, we work with Defence Primes and see that being, a, a, I guess, our organisation being a real trusted partner in, in that supply chain network. Sovereign capability is a key word that, that, gets, that gets spoken about quite regularly, but from our perspective, it, it's not new. It's, we've, we've been part of that sector for, for many years and, and evidence of that was that the new facility we built at, at Orchard Hills and then to the other part, I can walk through our workshop and see on our CNC machines, small, intricate, complex parts being manufactured at mass 
for, for the defence sector, which is, again, an interesting prospect. If I'm looking at a person coming out of school um, or part of a university degree, having diversity of work is the most, um, I guess, the, the best way to keep and attract your workforce because the, the mundane ways of, of, of just sitting on a machine or just processing a part day in, day out, having varieties that people can be stimulated, they can learn, um, they can be part of this NETM uh, program in terms of the, the micro-credentialing, there's so many opportunities to learn and grow in this sector, and it's not just a set and forget strategy, um, which is really important. Um, and also, probably lastly, from, from our perspective, in, in terms of those key infrastructure projects. So again, we're working part of the Snowy Hydro 2.0 project. Uh, we do a lot of work with, with um, in, the, in the, the energy sector as well, and, and see that being part of, I guess, a number of different sectors has, has really helped our organisation grow in the last 48 years but also then be able to sort of switch and, and, and play out different strategies and be able to try them and, and see if they succeed. So I think from that perspective, um, it just showcases again what the founder did for our organisation and the family continue to do today in terms of investing in people, investing in infrastructure and assets. And, and from our perspective, we're, we're really grateful to be part of um, today and also part of the, the new Aerotropolis and, and hopefully we can connect for... For, for more after uh, after the drink session today. So I'm happy to take any questions um, about our organisation, um, I guess some of this, um, the experiences we've had so far with the Western Sydney um, parklands and, and also the Advanced Manufacturing Research Facility. Otherwise, we, we can talk about later at the networking drinks. So any questions? Oh, Pablo. This wasn't pre-arranged either. <laughs> right. there at your site, which would be uh, another add-on. But on a more serious note, um, the lumpiness of fabrication, uh, sort of what's your view on how we can sort of minimise the lumpiness with the advanced manufacturing uh, possibilities that are out there? Mm. Do, you see, do you see that? I, I really do, Pab um, Pablo. Thank, thanks for that. I think the lumpiness of, of our organisation and, and I guess to again, to, to re reiterate the point that we've done work and supported Pablo and, and his organisation and, and vice versa. So within the sector, both manufacturing and advanced uh, manufacturing, there is real collaboration in our industry, which, which is important. So I think the, the, what I see initially in terms of that new facility is that testing out new technologies of welding um, using robots uh, and also additive and subtractive, um, I guess, technologies, using that to... to I guess if, you, if you've got a massive beam that Pablo and I will we'll make a, a, a beam, call it for the Sydney Football Stadium or for the building here, and it might take um, 10 or 15 hours worth of welding, how do we turn that into six hours welding? Or can we have it un, unmanned and have a robot do that? So being able to come into the facility and trial and test and be able to use the latest technology, I think will then will enable us as a, as a sector to improve. Because... Um, if, if there's technology or a, a machine on display in this facility, then it makes sense that, that three or four other people might go out and, and buy the same machine because it, it helps the sector. Uh, in terms of, I guess, in terms of your first question about the medical facility, um, I would certainly love to do that. Um, there are some customers that have, have um, maybe their footprint has, has minimised on our site. So if you ask Mark... Um, he's got a couple of areas on our site already identified for 3D printing and, and the like. So, um, exciting times. Mm. One more question? Any more questions? We're we good. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>